What's up everybody? Today we have a video that is one year in the making and that is my Wii U collection, which I collected for in 2024. So the long story short is that I had a Wii U at the time. I was around 11 or 12 when it came out and I loved it at the time. But around 2016, I hit that edgy teenager phase where Nintendo isn't cool anymore. And I sold everything, you know, mainly because the console was also dying at the same time. So I sold everything and didn't really care, just sold the console, all the games and everything. And that was pretty rare for me. I almost never sell games like that. Most of my collection is just stuff that I've kept throughout the years. And then like five years later, I started to like Nintendo again and I met someone who had a big Wii U collection. And I was looking at all the games and I was like, man, I had every single one of these games. So it really started to bother me that I didn't have them anymore because it really was pretty much the only console and set of games that I had in my life that I didn't have anymore. So at the start of this year, I set a goal to buy back my entire Wii U collection. And as you can see, I would say I achieved that. So first, I'm just going to talk about every game and what I thought of it at the time, what I think of it now, what it was like to buy it back. And then at the end of this video, I'll talk about what it's like collecting for Wii U in 2024 and why I think it's actually a pretty good console to go for. But I figure most of you just want to see the game, so we'll start with that. So first up, we have a game that I actually didn't have at the time, so I already broke the rule, but that is Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. I didn't have the game at the time because I really just wasn't interested in Amiibo cards. I love the Amiibo figures, I collected tons of those, but I wasn't too interested in cards. Plus, this game is stinky, it's not good at all. Um, there's much better party games on the Wii U that don't require you to tap a card on the gamepad to play it. However, it's also the only Animal Crossing entry that the Wii U got. And you wonder why the console failed. But yeah, so it just kind of made me want it because it is the Animal Crossing game on Wii U. And also, it's a dirt cheap game because if you don't have the cards, I don't think you can play it at all. So you'll see this game in every store you go into that has Wii U games and it's going to be like 5 to $10. So at a certain point, I was just like, you know what, I'll buy it. I'll add it. After that, we have Batman Arkham City Armored Edition. I remember when the Wii U was coming out, this game was such a big deal. Nintendo pushed it so hard. And I mean, it made sense. Arkham City was one of the biggest games that had come out in recent years at that time. And Nintendo didn't get it at first. So it was pretty big to get this. It's a fine version of the game, nothing too crazy. I don't know that it was really worth all the marketing they gave it, but at the end of the day, it's a good version of a fantastic game. And it was really cool at the time as a Nintendo fan to be able to play Arkham City. If you have tons of other consoles at your disposal, I wouldn't really say there's any reason to play this one, but if you only have a Wii U in 2024, it's a great way to play it. After that, we have Bayonetta 2, and I absolutely love this game. I love it so much, and it's probably one of my favorite action games of all time, honestly. I'd have to think harder about where I would really put it, but it's up there, like top five at the very least. I think it's an absolutely perfect game. It's everything you could want from an action game like this. I also love Bayonetta 2 just because the story behind it, what it was like to own a Wii U at the time and see Nintendo basically save this game. And it was so strange for them, right? This M-rated, violent, sexual game and Nintendo comes in and decides to publish it. It was just so strange. And now, you know, 10 years later, we can look back and see that Bayonetta became a Nintendo franchise out of this. You know, they made Bayonetta 3, they made that spin-off game on Switch as well. She's in Smash Bros and stuff. And so it's just really cool as someone who was there at the time following this game getting made and thinking it was so weird to see what's come from it. If you do buy this game secondhand, make sure you get the version that has Bayonetta as well because this came with Bayonetta 1 and 2 on Wii U, which was an awesome value at the time because the first Bayonetta game is great as well. Next up, we have Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. And I really like this game as well. It's such a cute little game. This came from Super Mario 3D World, which had the Captain Toad levels, and they made it into a full game. And this game is really, really cute. And I feel like this is one of the examples of a game that is on Switch, but I would say you should play it on Wii U. It just kind of makes more sense with the controls, the touchscreen and everything. Obviously, it was made with the gamepad in mind. So this is one of those rare cases where I would say you may want to play this on Wii U over Switch. And then we have Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Just an amazing game. I remember people were kind of like mixed on this one at the time. They just felt like it didn't do that much different, I guess. But I think this game is great. I think it's genuinely one of the best 2D platformers I've ever played. I love that these games are still difficult. They didn't, you know, rein them back in or anything like that from what you would expect from Donkey Kong Country. The game is beautiful. It's great. I love this game. I really do. Next, we have DuckTales Remastered, which I did not own physically at the time, but I did have it 
digitally. And this game is so great. They did such a good job remaking the NES DuckTales game. I remember being like weirdly excited for this game at the time. I don't know what made me so into it because I'm not really a big NES guy or anything like that. I don't think I'd ever played the original DuckTales, nor did I care about the show or anything like that. But for some reason, I got really excited for this game at the time and it did not let me down. It was great. And I just also think it's awesome that it has a physical print at all. I think that's really cool and I'm happy to have this in the collection. After that we have a game that frustrated me in this collection because it's Game & Wario. And this is another bad game. I don't want to ever play this game again and I had it at the time and I sold it for probably what $10 and it's now worth like $80. Um, this game, I did not want to pay that, but I had to because I had to complete the collection that I had at the time. And yeah, this game just isn't good. I don't know what they were really thinking with this game, honestly. Um, it doesn't really have any of the qualities that you would expect from like a WarioWare game, for example. And I love WarioWare games, so that was pretty disappointing. And it's just really a bizarre concept in general. Obviously, they were trying to make use of the gamepad and everything, but it's just not a good game. And I guess it was really low print, that's why it's expensive. I had to search for this one for a while because a lot of places would kind of overcharge for it. Um, but I finally found it for 80 on eBay eventually, and that was considered good. So this game upsets me because I owned it at the time and now I paid 80 to get it back and I never want to play it again. Then we have Hyrule Warriors. Another interesting game, I don't really like Dynasty Warriors games. It's one of those franchises that I've tried probably three or four times because they make so many of these games. They're always usually pretty cheap eventually. And so I always try them because like there must be something I'm missing. I'm not sure if this was the first kind of collaboration they did with Warriors, like Dynasty Warriors, if this was the first collaboration game, but it's kind of become a thing, not just for Nintendo, but in general. So that's kind of cool. And it was cool, you know, the art style and stuff is, is a cool take on Zelda. So I did like it, but Ultimately, I think I just don't like Dynasty Warriors games. I should probably stop trying. Then we have Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. So this is like an example of why I think the Wii U struggled because a lot of the Nintendo big franchises that you think of, they didn't get normal entries. Like this is the only Kirby game and it's not a normal Kirby game. You know, it's similar to Animal Crossing where you kind of look at the Wii U library and you're like, there's no way that's the only Kirby game that they put out. But it is. Obviously, I see what they were going for with the touchscreen and everything, but it just doesn't really work as a home console game, in my opinion. The problem is you have to always be looking at the gamepad to use the touchscreen. So you're just never looking at the TV at all. They didn't really do anything to incorporate both screens. So you're kind of just staring at the gamepad screen the whole time, which was just kind of lame. It makes this not really feel like a home console game. The art style is great, though. The claymation style is really good. So there's that. And we have Lego City Undercover. And I actually love this game. I love this game probably more than I should, even to this day. But Lego City Undercover is actually really fun. I know there's that meme of it where that guy says Lego GTA over and over again, but it is like Lego GTA. It is like GTA for kids, but it's really fun. And the story and the writing is pretty funny. I like the game a lot. It's genuinely good. I think this game is genuinely good. And whether you like Lego games or not, I think you could find some enjoyment from this. I also remember this game came out around the time when there was like nothing else to play on Wii U, so that made me happy at the time as well. Finally, we have, I don't know why I said finally, we're not even halfway through, but we have Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games. Mario and Sonic uh, at the Olympics is just so strange. Like how did this even become a thing? The two biggest platforming icons finally collab and it's for the Olympic Games. I would love to be in the room that pitched that for the first time ever, but I feel like this was the game where people kind of stopped caring about the series that much. You had the original on Wii, then you had the first Winter Games one, then they did 2012, and then it was like, okay, now they're doing Winter again. And I feel like this is where people kind of just stopped caring. But I had this game at the time. I always played it a lot with like my family and we always enjoyed these games. So I'm happy to have it back because it does mean something to me, but this is definitely probably the last time I, I think I ever cared or bought Mario and Sonic. Next we have Mario Kart 8, which, in my opinion, is the best Mario Kart ever made. It's really not close if you're playing the deluxe version on Switch. There's really no reason to go back to this one now. It's pretty much worse in every way. You know, the items work differently in the races that it's hard to go back to. The battle mode was really bad. It's just not as good as the Switch version, but at the time, this game was amazing. I mean, it's the best Mario Kart game at its core. And I played this one so much online. It was great. It was amazing at the time, but no reason to really play it now. Mario Party 
10. Came in the midst of the worst era of Mario Party. I remember thinking this game wasn't that bad, you know, keep in mind, I was, you know, 13 and I would play games with my family and friends a lot, so Mario Party was always fun, even when it was bad, in my opinion. But yeah, this one's not great. The main gimmick they went for was the Bowser mode with the gamepad, which was pretty fun, but you needed a lot of people for it to be fun. It wasn't really fun with like two people and computers. Overall, I don't think this game is that bad, but it's certainly not anything too special. Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, this game is terrible. I mean, I made a video about Mario sports games, um, and I talked about it. This game is just bad. Like, I don't know how this even got put out. It has no content whatsoever. It's just not good. I mean, it came, I think this, was this 2015 or 2016? Uh, it says 2015 on the back. So that was that like pretty bad year for Nintendo. And yeah, this game is just terrible. Even like the main gimmick where you get the uh, mega mushroom and get big, it's like, man, you really weren't trying at all. Like it's just bare minimum, just not good. After that, we have Minecraft. Wii U edition. Again, not one I had at the time, but I saw this and it just reminded me of at the time when this game was like getting released. People thought this was gonna like change Minecraft, you know, with the gamepad and having your inventory down there and stuff. And it just kind of ended up being a normal version of Minecraft. But I remember people talking about Minecraft coming to Wii U for so long. And I also realized I don't own Minecraft physically on anything. So I was like, why not make it the Wii U version, right? Then, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. So this is, to this day, the only Monster Hunter game I've ever played, which I'm sure some of you are clicking off the video now, but I kind of think that's a sign of what it was like to own a Wii U at the time. The fact that I even tried this game, because I've never played Monster Hunter and I went out and bought this game, which kind of tells you there just wasn't a whole lot to play. Ultimately, I can't say much about it because I don't understand Monster Hunter at all, but I thought it was good. It looked good graphically and everything. And yeah, I, I didn't understand a single thing I was doing, but next we have NES Remix Pack. And I actually love these games. I think these games are genuinely so much fun. Again, kind of tells you what it was like to own a Wii U where like, I remember the day NES Remix came out. There just wasn't a whole lot to play, but these games are really fun. And it's funny, like they did that Nintendo World Championship game this year. And when that got announced, I was so excited because I was like, oh, it looks like NES Remix. I can't wait to play a new NES Remix. And it wasn't really like that. It was a little more like normal, whereas this one tries to get a little more wacky with it. And I actually picked this game up not long after World Championships because I was like waiting so long to play NES Remix again. And then it wasn't really like that. So I got this and it's so much better. New Super Mario Bros. U. The new Super Mario Bros. series obviously gets a lot of hate. I always liked it. Again, I was a kid at the time. It was made for me. It was simple Mario games, and I always thought they were fun. And having this day one as a launch title was cool as well. I believe this came out the same year as New Super Mario Bros. 2, which was definitely a mistake, I think, on their part. They should have spread those out. Having two in one year was just ridiculous. But we have New Super Luigi U, which I love that this got its own version as well. There's a version of Mario Brothers U that has both of them, but I searched pretty hard to find this because I wanted it on its own. I think this game's better than the original. It's really fun. It's much harder. I remember playing through this game and feeling very accomplished when I beat it at the time because it's not easy and it's a really fun game. Then we have the game that came with the Wii U Deluxe set, which was Nintendo Land. And I really like Nintendo Land. This game is really fun. It was really fun playing it at the time with my friends and stuff. And this game was obviously trying to be like Wii Sports, you know, where it teaches you kind of what this system is gonna be about and why you should be happy that you bought it, show it to your friends and make them want it. And ultimately it kind of failed to do that. It wasn't like Wii Sports, but I think this game is really fun. The Mario Chase mode, I remember playing that so much. The Animal Crossing mode. And I also liked that they had games that could be played single player because that's something that you don't usually see from like a pack-in kind of um, peripheral style game, you know what I mean? I think Nintendo Land's really, really fun, especially if you have people to play it with now. It's a good time. I kind of feel bad that it didn't really achieve what they wanted it to because I do think it's fun. Paper Mario Color Splash. I remember thinking this game was so weird because they kind of just released it out of nowhere. Like they really did not market this game very much. I remember like they just, I think they may have just like tweeted it one day, like, oh, this is coming out. 
And I was like, okay. I can't really remember anything that happens in it and I just don't like it all that much, honestly. But I wouldn't say it's like terrible or anything. Again, a game that's only on Wii U, hasn't got ported anywhere, probably never will. Pikmin 3. Pikmin 3 is still personally my favorite Pikmin game. I just love this game so much. I think part of that might be nostalgia because I remember being so excited for it. It was the first really like big Nintendo first party game that came out after the Wii U had been released, so that definitely helped. And I also remember thinking the graphics were so good, you know, obviously Nintendo's first time having an HD console. I really like Pikmin 3 a lot. I think this game is so, so good. Pokin Tournament, a Pokemon Tekken crossover. This game is really bizarre. I think it's fun. I never got that into it. I honestly never understood what I was doing that much, but I love that it exists because it's just so weird. Next we have Rayman Legends, which if you watch my channel, you know I love Rayman, and Rayman Legends is one of my favorite 2D platformers ever, but this game also broke my heart so much, and if you were a Wii U owner at the time, you know why. This game was about a month out from launch, and it was going to be a Wii U exclusive, it was going to be a big game, it was coming early 2013 when there wasn't much else to play, and Ubisoft said, hey, our zombie M-rated game didn't sell very well, so we're not going to release this the way we said we would. We're going to delay it nine months, and it's not going to be Wii U exclusive anymore. I didn't really care about the Wii U exclusive part, but delaying it nine months when it was a month away from launch, that stung so much because I was so excited for this game. But I waited the extra time and bought it and it was so worth it. This game is just so good. I said it was one of my favorite 2D platformers. Honestly, it's probably one of my favorite games of all time. I love Rayman Legends so much. I bought it probably two or three different times, uh, probably three or four different times now because I had to rebuy it. But every time I've rebought it on, you know, PS4 or Switch or wherever, I play through it again all the way through. And I don't usually replay games, so I think that says a lot. I love Rayman Legends so much, even though it broke my heart. Next we have kind of a random one, which is Runbo Deluxe Edition. I have actually never played this game before. I believe it's like a speedrunners style game where you race people. Um, and it is also sealed, which is not something I usually care about. I don't collect sealed games, I like to play my games, I open them, but the price wasn't much different and I hadn't seen this game the entire year collecting Wii U, you know, going to different stores and uh, game convention and stuff, I had never seen this game. So it kind of just made me want it. And I also saw on the back here that it has indie game characters, which BitTrip Runner caught my attention because I love BitTrip so much. So I was like, you know what? This is kind of a cool game to have, and it was only on the eShop, so to have it physically is cool. I think it is on Switch, though, so it's not, you know, lost media or anything, but kind of just a random cool one that I found. Scribble Knots Unlimited. So I don't know if Scribble Knots is, like, obscure or not. I don't really know if it was popular, but I loved it so much. I had the 2 on DS. So, so excited for this one. Getting it on a home console was awesome. The Wii U was a perfect match for it. Scribble Knots is just one of those games. I might make a whole video about it at some point. It just really worked for me as a kid. I loved it so much. It was so, so fun. I didn't like the one that came after this, the uh, DC crossover one. That one was lame. I didn't even rebuy it because I really don't care about it. And this was pretty much the last good Scribble Knots, and the series kind of died after that, which makes me sad, but I would love to see it come back someday. I love Scribble Knots so much. Next, we have another game that I feel like in a weird way, kind of like was one of the defining games of the Wii U, which was Shovel Knight. I remember when this game came out, it was such a huge thing and Nintendo really embraced it, you know, making the Amiibo and stuff like that. Shovel Knight really kind of exemplifies something that was really cool about the Wii U, which is that indies really dominated in a way because there wasn't always a lot to play. So indie games could come to the system and get a lot of attention. I mean, you could say the same about Rumbo that I just showed. And I think it's awesome that there was a console that indies could kind of come to and get a lot of attention. And Shovel Knight, I mean, was this only on Wii U when it first came out? I want to say it was, which is kind of crazy. It blew up. It became a huge game. The company's still around. It's a series and everything. And like I said, Nintendo embraced it. And Shovel Knight was just a really, really awesome game to get at the time. Once again, I love that it got a physical print and everything. This game is great. Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. I just remember with this game, it had got announced like kind of around the same time as Mario Kart 7, and they both did the same kind of thing where you could flip from water to air to racing. And I just pictured the Sega developers just being so pissed because they probably thought like, oh, we got this brand new idea that's gonna beat Mario Kart. And then they did the same damn thing at the same time. So I always thought the game was funny for that. Yeah, this is the game with Danica Patrick and Wreck-It Ralph. So, can you play as Danica Patrick and Wreck-It Ralph in Mario Kart 7? I didn't think so. Sonic All-Stars Racing clears. 
That is actually a fun game though, jokes aside. Sonic Lost World, the Wii U exclusive, or actually it was on 3DS, but the Nintendo exclusive uh, Sonic game. A very weird game, a very weird game. It's just one of those examples of Sonic where it's just like, man, they do the weirdest stuff sometimes. I didn't like this game that much, but I didn't think it was terrible. Um, I kind of liked how it looked, like the visual style and everything. But honestly, I don't remember that much about it to really give you a definitive opinion. Splatoon. Splatoon is just another example of what a weird game to put out. And it became huge. It became one of Nintendo's biggest franchises. I think Splatoon is so awesome just for that simple fact that this bizarre idea that started on the Wii U became one of their biggest franchises. I just love that. And this game was genuinely so much fun to play at the time. I played it a lot. I never really got into Splatoon 2 or 3 though. I just, I don't know. I think I just kind of missed it. Um, but Splatoon 1, I played a lot and I really, really liked it. I think this game is so fun. Next up, we have the Star Fox games, which Star Fox Guard, I never really played. I don't really get it. I, I don't really know why they did that, but Star Fox Zero is the main thing. Oh, by the way, I, at first I was like, I'm not gonna buy Star Fox Guard because I don't know if you can tell, but it's like weirdly off colored white, which really bothers me. But I, it was actually hard to find Star Fox Zero without Guard. Like they're almost like people just kept them together always. So at a certain point I was just like, screw it. Um, Star Fox Zero. Not a good game, the controls are horrible, and it's just not that great. You know what I've noticed about Star Fox, by the way? Why do I feel like they always support Star Fox on the consoles that fail? Like, GameCube got a ton of Star Fox games, Wii U gets a Star Fox game, but like, the Wii never got a Star Fox game, the Switch never got a Star Fox game. It's like, I kind of felt the same way about Pikmin also, although they finally released Pikmin 4 on the Switch, but it's like, can we get a Star Fox game on a console that like, succeeds for once? I'd like to see that. Then we have Super Mario Maker, and this is a really terrible like beat up copy, so I might like buy a new one at some point because it's such a cheap game, but Super Mario Maker was awesome. Just one of those games that I feel like everyone like always knew would be good, but we never thought would actually happen. And it was just so great. And I personally think it's better than Mario Maker 2 just because you had the gamepad to make the levels. It was much more intuitive. It just fit better. But I know Mario Maker 2 has like more options and more things you can do in it. So I guess it's probably better, but this one was just special to me and I can't wait for hopefully Mario Maker 3 because these games are just so fun. They're so good. Then we have Super Mario 3D World, my beloved game that got so much hate at the time because it wasn't a normal 3D Mario game and it's not. The fact that this is the Wii U's only 3D Mario game is somewhat disappointing because it's just not in that same style. But this game is so, so good. And I love that people have kind of come around on it because I always loved this game. I didn't really care that much at the time that it wasn't traditional. I loved it. The graphics were such a step up and everything. I will say, I tried to go back to this one after playing the Switch version and the Switch version is so much better. It's so much faster. And um, it's really hard to go back to the Wii U version if you've played that one because you're gonna feel so slow. But yeah, such a great game. And I'm glad people have come, a, come around on it and they're nicer to it. That makes me happy. Super Smash Bros for Wii U. I will never forget how excited I was for this game. It was the first Smash game for me personally that I kind of followed from the beginning, the whole marketing, every character that was getting announced and everything. It was so, so exciting. I loved Smash Bros as a kid so much. I was obsessed with Brawl. And so I was so excited for this game and it's great. It's similar to a lot of Wii U games where I feel like is there any reason to play it now? I know it is different from Ultimate in a lot of ways, but Ultimate is, you know, the same roster, the same maps, just more. So it is like, is there a reason to go back to it? I don't know, but I loved it so much at the time. It was, it was great. We have this game, Tank Tank Tank, which if I'm not mistaken is like an arcade game that they made into a Wii U game. And this game is not that good. It was really, really bizarre that they sold this as like a full game because it was really only fun for like five minutes because it's an arcade game, so that's not too surprising. But I did have it at the time. I don't know what made me want it, other than probably I just needed a new Wii U game. And yeah, it's okay. I did have some fun playing it at the time, but yeah, I don't know. Next we have the Wind Waker HD. Wind Waker is my personal favorite Zelda game. I just love the art style, love everything about it. And this is the best version of the game, visually and gameplay wise, the improvements they made. It's the best version of the game. I love this gold box art as well. There's a variant where it's like normal colors, but I had the gold one. I wanted that gold one back. I love it. This game was annoying to get back actually because people are really overpricing it. 
I think just because it's Zelda and it is only on Wii U, so they think they can get more. But yeah, this is really only like a 50 or $60 game, but I would constantly see people like in stores or on eBay or whatever, and it'd be like $80, $90, and it's like, why are you charging that much? I don't know, but this game is so good and I really kind of want to replay it actually. Then we have the most expensive game that I had to buy back, which was Twilight Princess HD. So again, only on Wii U. Um, I believe this is probably a lower print because it came out pretty late in the Wii U life cycle and that's why it's more expensive. I'll be honest, I don't have that much experience with Twilight Princess. I've tried to play it on Wii when I was even younger and I was just way too stupid. I did not understand anything. Then I tried it again on Wii U and I was slightly less stupid, but I think I was still too dumb for it. And I think I really wanna try it again now on Wii U and see what it's like. Cause I think I'd be a little more patient, especially with the slow beginning and everything. And I want to try this one because people love Twilight Princess. I know they do. Um, that was like $100, I think. That was the most expensive game I had to buy back. Next, we have The Wonderful 101, which is from Platinum Games, same people who made Bayonetta 2. So I was pretty excited. Again, a weird game, but I actually kind of liked it at the time. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, it's not great. It's nothing special. But if you really like Platinum Games, I mean, you'll like this game. They have re-released it on modern hardware like uh, Steam and Switch, I think, and PS4. I don't know what that version's like because this is so reliant on touch controls, so I'm not sure what it's like, but this game is, is pretty cool. I mean, I did like it at the time, honestly. We have a game here that I feel like is pretty forgotten, um, and that's Wii Party U. A lot of people don't talk about Wii Party U. It is one of those games that's stuck on Wii U, but no one really talks about it. I think this game is genuinely, like, really good like way better than a Wii Party game should be. I played this game so much with friends and family and stuff like this game is actually really good in my opinion. Surprisingly expensive I think it was like $50 to get back. I don't know it's just really good. I think it's the best party game on Wii U by far. There were some really funny creative uses for the gamepad and I just think it's a great game. If you have people who are willing to come to your house in 2024 to play Wii U I would recommend getting this one. Then we have Xenoblade Chronicles X, and this was for a long time one of those games that was stuck on Wii U, but they did just recently announce it's gonna be coming to Switch, I believe in March next year, so it will be one of the other games leaving Wii U exclusivity, which is probably a good thing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have a ton of experience with Xenoblade, but I always thought this game was pretty cool with the mechs and stuff. I don't know what Xenoblade fans really think of it. I think they like it. I don't think it's considered one of the best, but feel free to correct me about that, but um, this was actually kind of nice because I was waiting on buying it and then they announced the Switch version and it went down in price a little bit. So that was great. And I got I got it for like $30, I think, which it was usually like 40 or 50. Yoshi's Woolly World, um, which for some reason I always said Wally World and then I realized like a long time later that makes no sense at all. I love this game. This game is so cute. I love the art style. I think it is better than the one on Switch. I wish they would re-release this one. Um, it's so good. Really, really like it. And then finally we have the last game, which is Zombie you the m-rated launch title that was going to use the gamepad really creatively and i actually did think it used the gamepad pretty well it was probably one of the best uses of the gamepad which is not a great sign honestly that the m-rated ubisoft zombie game is one of the best uses of the gamepad but it was pretty cool and the whole concept was great i think with you know having your inventory on the gamepad screen and stuff like that unfortunately the game itself is just kind of average but it's kind of like a defining Wii U game for me. I feel like every Wii U collection should have it just because it was such a big thing at the time to talk about that game. And so there you have it. There is every Wii U game I collected in 2024, got back every game I had as a kid, which feels great. And I love seeing these games on my shelf and having them back. I'm very happy I did this. So if you were just here to see my collection, then I guess you can click off now. But I wanna talk about what it was like collecting for Wii U in 2024 and why I would honestly recommend it going into 2025. The Wii U is a really interesting console, right? Because it didn't sell very well. So therefore all the games, there's not that many copies of them, but many of them are still really cheap. And that's because basically every mainline first party Nintendo title you can think of is on Switch, as you saw throughout this video. And so that keeps the prices down. You know, on other Nintendo consoles, like think about GameCube, right? Games like Mario Sunshine or Mario Kart or Smash Bros. Melee, they hold their value pretty well because anybody going back and buying a GameCube is gonna want those games. It's the same as like Pokemon games on DS or Game Boy, right? They hold their value, but despite those games selling really well, they're not rare or anything, but they hold their value because everybody who buys that console is gonna want it. Whereas with the Wii U, you don't need a Wii U to play these games. A lot of them are on Switch. And so most of the games you see here are 
you know, five, 10, 15, $20. There's not a ton of games here that are expensive. There's the exceptions like Game & Wario, the Zelda games, but for the most part, you're gonna be paying no more than $20 for most of the games you see here, especially if you, you know, look for better deals. You know, there's a couple like $40, $50 games, but like for the most part, it's a really cheap console to collect for. You can get a big collection for not a lot of money. And I think that's really cool. I am worried about the consoles long-term. I think that's where you're gonna see the price really start to go up because there's not a lot of Wii U's out there. They have a lot of issues that can really hurt the system long-term and it doesn't function without a gamepad and there's only as many gamepads as there are Wii U's. So if one of those two things breaks, you're out. Um, and so I do think you're gonna see the price go up on the consoles because they're gonna have to have a working system and a working gamepad. But for the games themselves, I don't really see the price changing much. I think they're all gonna kinda just stay where they are. The Wii U is just such a bizarre, weird console, and I'm always kinda, I always kinda favor consoles that didn't do that well. They're just more interesting to me, and they make me wanna have the collections, and so that's why I did this. And I think if you have memories with the Wii U like I do, or if you're just interested in the system at all, I think now is a great time to do it. I think you can get a big collection for cheap, and also, if you're interested, modding is great on Wii U if that's something that you care about because you can play pretty much every Nintendo console you can think of on the Wii U because it has compatibility with the motion controls, it has two screens for DS games, you can play all of those games basically how they're intended on Wii U which is really really cool. But other than that that's pretty much all I have to say. This was a lot of fun doing this this year. I've never really gone out and collected for a certain console. Like I said my collection that I have is all games that I just bought at the time in the moment because I wanted to play them and then I keep them. I've never really been like, here's my checklist of games that I want to go buy. So doing that this year for Wii U was really fun. It, I'm already having the itch to do it for another console. You know, maybe PS3 is one that's in my mind because I don't have a ton of those games. But you know, for now, I don't really have the room for that. It's probably better that I don't do that just for my money's sake, but I'm really happy I did this, bought back my whole Wii U stuff. And if you enjoy Wii U, a week after this video, I'm going to have a whole video in my how to save a console series about Wii U. So stick around for that if you are interested and thanks for watching.